Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. Today we are going to discuss about another nonlinear deformer that is Flare. Under the Create Deformer menu, you can find the nonlinear section, and I have already tiered tiered that out. Okay, there is the second one is Flare. Okay, for giving you example of uh, what or how Flare actually works, I just create a polygonal cube and on the input node, I just increase its height, hit the 5 button to show the object in shaded mode. Okay, now in the previous uh, non-linear example which is which was a bend I have told you that uh, deformation needs subdivisions so in this case also we need at least the subdivision height so increasing my subdivision height later on you can increase the subdivision depth and width also but right now I'm happy with my uh, subdivision height fine okay by selecting that object go to the flare option here I just reset my settings and leaving my uh, basic settings untouched and hit create okay immediately you can see there's a flare one handle has been created exactly like we had in in the bend a deformer okay if you hit 4 and in the wireframe mode you can see that uh, flare one handle has been uh, put exactly the middle of, of your object that's how the deformers actually wants to play okay now we're going to go to the options of the flare in flare you can see there are pretty much uh, pretty uh, different kind of uh, option that we had in bend like a start flex X start flex flex Z N flare X, N flare Z, curve, low bound, and high bound. Few of them are is quite similar, like uh, with bend, like low bound, high bound, and the envelope. Um, I'll just uh, go through th those options also. If you haven't, uh, uh, you know, uh, go through the bend bend deformer uh, tutorial that we have in our in our tutorial section. Though I will strongly recommend that uh, you have, you should uh, go through that because uh, those options uh, like envelope and high bound, low bound options have been uh, described pretty, pretty much uh, clearly over there. I just go through on those options also. Okay, to start with, um, I'll start with the start flare X and Z. Now, what these are flare flare actually do? Now, if you go to start X and Z, if I increase the start X value. Immediately you can see it's almost scaling the base of that particular object that is increasing the base Now this is the plus point of your flare and the same thing But the same thing is happening actually on the x-axis you can see if I hit My translate button you can see the x-axis has been increased so that's why the start flare x is uh, specifically told about the x-axis over here this naming convention this name of this parameter has been set to this okay now start z the same thing will happen on the z-axis so that's why it's it it won't affect your y-axis it only affects the x and z-axis so that's a start and the start whenever you are using start flare that is actually creating or affecting the base of your of your object and the same thing will go on for n flare x and z if you if you increase the value you can see it's it's a uh, is for the top part see fine so so far it's absolutely fine but where actually those subdivisions comes to play now whenever you are in increasing the value of the curve that is interesting because this option will give you a very interesting shape of your particular object like if you increasing your value and the curvature you can have this kind of sh uh, this kind of shape and also oops, sorry if you you know decrease the value of the curve <coughs> you'll also also find some interesting shapes 
Now, in this case, the low bound and high bound is always uh, come handy because if I am using increasing the my low bound value, which will actually restrict my object to have the uh, flare deformers to be worked on, you can see my object is absolutely um, without effect of my flare deformers. And the same thing will happen if I hit minus one. And I increase, I sorry, I decrease my low bound. You can see the object beyond that particular uh, flare handle is almost untouched. Like there is no effect on there. So it's really, really sometimes effective uh, of of to to create a, a, such a kind of a model, a, such a kind of structure which is uh, absolutely you know uh, not possible, or it's very uh, difficult to make by just to extrude or any, any kind of cuts so here you can see you can clearly see that lack of my segments is actually uh, happening because uh, if i go to the p cube option and the inputs i can see i have only put the subdivision height to 11 and that is why this is non linear that i've already told you in the bend uh, bend deformers that, that is non-linear because I can still get back to my polycube one section and I can increase my you know uh, the subdivisions level and to to differentiate the topology and yet the effect of the flare is absolutely perfect so that is the use of uh, a flare and uh, this is pretty, pretty much similar uh, how the bend is actually work on the options okay uh, I just want to uh, tell you one thing that is the envelope option that is on it's as the top of the uh, top of the uh, list that is the uh, the entire effect of the flare to your object you can see your object is also been affected 0.4 percent by the uh, by the flare this is sometimes really handy to uh, to animate the objects or maybe deforms any objects to to into a different things uh, and the, you can use this uh, this envelope option uh, by uh, through on while animating and uh, it it can give you a, a really great kind of a effect while while you're using this kind of deformers so <clears throat> Uh, deformers are really interesting so you can use them in modeling you can use them in animation according to your requirement and it's really fun to work with so hope you enjoy this i will come get back to you uh, with other deformers also till then thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and also follow us on twitter and facebook so thank you very much bye